all right so welcome to this lesson and at this point we are at the persistent level where we will maintain the persistence and use some of the compromised accounts to leverage another accounts and uh, this time we are going to have the Kerberos sting attack so just roasting the Kerberos users or the service accounts using the Kerberos sting attacks this attack looks simple in nature and also this doesn't require much effort using the uh, either the tools or by going to manually explore or having the recognizers. So let's first understand what is Kerberos sting attack actually. So before going to that, let me uh, open up the windows here and let me show you some of the user accounts that we have already configured and that we already know about that too. But for this Kerberos sting attack, this is mandatory to know what is the service account in this case. So going to Active Directory and the users. And here we can see there are multiple users available. But if you remember uh, correctly, we are just configure a service account that is the SQL service at the lab setup module. So this is uh, the account that is the SQL service account and the SPN that we set in the first very first module. So going to uh, get several information about this one can be have here like going to general we can see this is the account that we created and creating four sessions the it have never created the session so this actually doesn't require so only information related to the accounts are required and this account is the target at this time in this lesson so let me close this all and here we can see uh, what is the harvesting attack and what it actually requires what it, what it is on which it is dependent on so this is the basically post exploitations and now we are at the persistence level so we will maintain the persistent on the target domain and the domain controller so after the post exploitations after we have exploited a particular user a multiple user having gained the higher level of privileges we can perform something lateral movement or simply get the password hashes and crack them offline so the Caribbean thing is in simple getting the password hashes of the service accounts having the register SPNs that is the service principal names and simply crack them all offline as you can see every information is related to that are available and this is a good resource about what is the Kerberos sting attacks and the uh, getting the mitigation detection and everything that have been explained easily as you can see some of the points mentioned here are like the this attack does not require special privileges or administrative rights to the domain any domain joint computer will do so for the purpose of extracting the service account credentials and the hashes and this is the base part for that and the next thing is impersonating aspects comes from an unconstrained delegation ability on the part of certain computer controls and the computer accounts so third one is simply getting the password cracked offline using the Kali Linux and the Haskett so let's do so and for the information for better getting information about this one Kerberos sting attacks and something uh, techniques attack vectors how it works everything is given here to get the uh, have a good fair idea about this one and we can get it using this one so the basic part of the Kerberos sting is simple getting the information about the SPNs so we can get it using the uh, PowerShell to get how many uh, service accounts are actually and then request the TGS tickets then get the hashes crack the hashes then we will have the newer privileges and the newer services available for us so now let's jump to the uh, practical side of this uh, information and this attack that we will conduct here so now uh, let me close this first all right so now moving to the PowerShell 
and all right so let me open up this one by going to the tool that i will be using in this lesson so this is the ghost pack compiled binaries that is available over the github and you can download by going to uh, such simply ghost pack compiled binaries and going to this folder we will have the multiple tools but we are not going to use all of these tools but the only one rubius and this is going to perform a query to the domain controller to get the all of the service accounts and multiple accounts if there is multiple accounts this will fetch all of that so let's jump to right click there uh, with the shift and then open up the powershell here so powershell window is opened up with the same path and now going to use ls all right so let me cancel this first now going to ls we can have the uh, rubius.exe and now i'm going to use the rubius.exe to get the uh, some information about how it actually supports and what are the supported formats what are the informations that it can have so going to roasting here we can see this is the first one uh, actually not the first one for this tool there are multiple things even of this one too but for the curve roasting these are the commands to perform the curve roasting so and the commands are simply uh, rubyes.exe curve roast provide the spn if you have the information about the spn you can get it too and uh, if you don't have you can simply put the domain controller name and the uh, domain name so what we can do is in this case let me uh, clear it and rubyes.exe then carberost then we need to uh, provide the uh, domain so the domain will be grayhead.local then we need to provide the dc that will be the hacking minus dc in my case and uh, that's it it doesn't require so many things but we will use more commands to roast and save the passwords so simply hit the enter and this is going to fetch all of these service accounts service account names and here we can see uh, these have fetched the uh, krb uh, 5 tgs for the sql service account there is one sql service account and here we can see the total Kerberostable users. As we already know, we have only one user that is the service account in the uh, Active Directory, and uh, one that is, that one is the SQL service that we created at first module. So these are the hashes that it have grabbed. Now the idea is simple to use the simple commands as well. So if I am going to use the uh, Kerberost only, this is also going to get it, and if I'm going to use this simple, this is also going to get all of the hashes in this simple file format. And now we can see all of the informations are clear and visible. But this command that I used is, uh, this one is only for if you are on the, logged in on the domain controller or simply say the server. And if you are on the other client machine or the other domain joint computers, as we uh, learned about over the uh, things like here let me show you once again uh, this one uh, this as this article says and this is the reality that is it doesn't require any interaction with the domain controllers and the active directory and uh, this fetches all of the informations and the service accounts for the SPN users for the service users and uh, this is also doesn't require any special privileges and any domain joint machine will do so for extracting the SPN. Now moving back to the machine and using the same kind of uh, like the uh, we need to provide the domain controller or the DC. So this will be the domain in this case and put the domain if you are on the other machine and same way dc that will be the domain controller name 
so in my case this is that one and this will get all of the information that is the Kirby Roastable accounts so here we can see the total Kirby Roastable users is one there is nothing more and now what we are required is simply uh, export this file so the command for that will be let me show you rubyes once again for the help file so going to uh, roasting here we can see uh, perform kind of roasting outputting hashes to a file so output file that will be the out file and the hashes this format requires to do so in many cases if the rubyes tool is not able to identify the spn we can provide the SPN in this case. So if we know the SPN number, uh, I mean to say the SPN username, so that will be the SQL service in my case. So this way we can uh, get information if the Rubase is unable to find out. And multiple things are there uh, for the help file, Rubase uh, understands and Rubase is working on. So every command requires multiple access and the multiple commands for the syntax we can combine so now moving to uh, the out file and the out file will be simple simply append the out file in this way and the name like the has.txt and once this is uh, going to hit enter uh, let me do so so has one as I have already hashed and dumped all the credentials, in this case simply one. So I'm not going to dump again and again in th with the same name. So hit enter and here we can see has written to the path with the name has.hash1.txt. And here we can also see this is also uh, dumped and written. Now open it up and here we can see all of the hashes in the NTLM format and the Kerberost uh, format for the hascat so hascat also supports the attacking and password cracking kerberos tickets password format so let me open up the Kali linux now so once you have just dumped the password hashes kerberos state simply you can transfer this file to the Kali linux by any means so I have transferred already to the Kali Linux. Let me open it up. All right, so now we can see uh, this has.txt that I have already transferred for the SQL service account. So this has been transferred here. Now we need to uh, put the hascat, fire it and use the specified format for Kerberos TCT. So in order to get that uh, information, we need to, uh, let me open up the hascat uh, with the root privilege and let me stretch it a little bit. All right, so now uh, using the hascat and the health file, that is the health it will open up the help file to get the switches and the syntax that will be used with this kind of file type to crack that hashes so we need to use the uh, like uh, we need to use the uh, first one that is the attack modes so this one also requires attack modes will be used and that will be the straight combination brute force so I'm not going to use that all simply i will use the uh, dictionary base that will be the straight in this case and uh, hash types that will be required so let me uh, i know the hash type will be 13100 so let me grab that using the uh, graph format grep command here so that will be 13100 and this will grab all that all right so this is the uh, type of the hash type that the hascat understands this is for the Kerberos format and here we can see uh, ticket granting service now uh, we need to crack that and if you are uh, still unfamiliar with the uh, Kerberos 5 and what the 13100 let me show you here 
so that will be one three uh, one zero zero for the Kerberos and here we can see uh, this is the one three one zero zero for the Kerberos and five and something for TGS REP and so on so all these are the format that the Haskat understands and this is required for uh, like the hash type so this is the hash type we need to put that uh, this is the hash modes hash types hash modes all these are one and going to the switches that we will be uh, putting on so the aim is the hash type so that will be the uh, minus aim and 13100 a is the attack mode that will be the dictionary based or something else now let me uh, open up the dictionary file first so for the dictionary file, uh, let me search, locate uh, the uh, rockyou.txt. So the rockyou.txt is the dictionary file here uh, inside the word list. And let me copy this and go to this one, uh, this location, that is the word list. And here we can see this is the rockyou.txt.gz. This is the uh, compressed format. Now we need to uncompress it. So I'm, I'm going to uh, use it, unzip, and the rockyou.txt.gz. And the uh, this is saying archive signature not found. Uh, alert. So the that will be gunzip. and done so this requires the gun zip so this is the format and we need to once the uh, compression is in the format same format we need to uncompress it using the same command same tool that supports the format of compression so now we have the rocky.txt now what we can do is uh, let me uh, grab the uh, hashes uh, like the all right so we already have the path that is the uh, this one now let me clear everything first all right so now i am going to use the hashcat in the same path so the hashcat a is the attack mode so the attack type uh, let me once again open up the help file first and here we can see uh, coming to the attack type uh, attack mode here so this is the zero that will be the straight so let me put the same thing so a will be zero minus m that is the uh, hash type will be one three one zero zero and we need to uh, provide the type of file so which file will be cracked so simply i'm going to uh, drag this here to get the path and uh, now we need to provide the dictionary file here all right so this is opened up close it now moving to the dictionary file so that will be the rockyou.txt as we are working in the same uh, directory at the word list so we don't need to put this path once again simply hit the enter and it will start uh, attacking so now uh, let me uh, wait for that how much time it is going to crack the hashes and as we already uh, have some information about the Haskat, this tool is the resource intensive tool and puts heavy loads on the system. But as we are running the Kali Linux over the virtual machine, so the only virtualized environment will have the uh, number of loads and any amount of loads this Haskat is going to put on. So you can see the time that it is taking on. We can also use the attack uh, workload for files, like this is the performance. So we can put the nightmare that will have the insane power consumptions. And here we can see uh, workload. So minus W is the workload. We can put the number four. So now let me wait for that and let's see how much time it is going to take. All right, so now uh, hopefully this have been cracked and we can see the status. We didn't need to uh, 
wait for the cracking all of the hashes and it doesn't even takes a second because of the system resources system memory that i have provided to the kali linux this took a little more time to initialize we can see the cracked password that was the password one two three and here it is so this is the password one two three for the sql service account now once again we made the persistent or lateral movement privilege escalation to the higher level of privilege escalation so this is the vertical privilege escalation that we made here for persistence and now we have the service accounts for the sql service accounts we can access the database of that using the account and the password so now we don't need to put the uh, brute force effort to crack the passwords we can put everything in the offline mode simply grab the passwords hashes then use the hashcat to crack them offline and that's the best thing for password cracking so hope you understand clearly that what it is about the Kerberos thing simply getting information about the Kerberos to roasting Kerberos users and now as we have only one service accounts so that's the uh, case we have only one account id and the passwords till then try it out using the both of the machines so for the assignment task uh, you are required to uh, grab the hashes from the domain joint computers in this case the punk in my case and also using the domain controllers account but with the different user accounts and check if it is allowed to get the SPNs users or uh, run certain commands to grab the service accounts information for attacking Kerberos or Kerberos Sting, the service users. See you in the next lessons. Thank you.